Talking about expansion, there's this question, you know, what, why aren't we expanding? If the universe is expanding, you know, wh why don't we see the earth expanding? Why aren't particles expanding? Uh, and I thought this was a great article for this. So let, let's take a look. This comes, this comes from Forbes, but it says, if you take a look at almost any galaxy in the universe, and, and you'll, you'll find that it's moving away from, it, from us. The further away it is, the faster it appears to recede. As light travels through the universe, it gets shifted to longer and redder wavelengths, as though the fabric of space itself is being stretched. At the largest distances, galaxies are being pushed away so rapidly by this expanding universe that no signals we could possibly send will ever reach them, even at the speed of light. Okay, but Again, right there, at the, at the largest distances, galaxies that are the most far away as they can be from us, galaxies are being pushed away so rapidly by this expanding universe. But again, when you're looking at galaxies that far away, you're looking back in time. So if you're seeing them being pushed away incredibly fast, why is it not that they, they were moving faster back then, but they're not they're not moving as fast now. So why is it that the expansion of the universe is increasing and not decreasing? You know, let's, let's say God inspired a big bang. You know, he snapped his fingers and there's a big bang. Uh, wouldn't we expect all that stuff that flew out from that, uh, you know, just generally speaking, to, 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 to slow down over time? How could it be that it's speeding up? Um, so that, that's, that's my question. But anyway, let's continue. It says, but even though the fabric of space is expanding throughout the universe, everywhere and in all directions, we aren't. Our atoms remain the same size. So do the planets, moons, and stars, as well as the distance separating them. Even the galaxies in our local group aren't expanding away from each other. They're gravitating towards one another instead. Here's the key to understanding what is and isn't expanding our expanding universe. Um, so... This is the original concept of space, uh, just a, a grid, basically. Um, and it, 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 there's some interesting history behind that, uh, how, how this was originally what the, what the universe was thought to be like. Um, then Einstein came along, he had a theory kind of more akin to this. But, it, but again, this grid is a two-dimensional surface. The two-dimensional grid is only meant to represent three-dimensional space. So really, this grid would be all around this sun and this planet. Um, so Einstein came along and, and uh, you know, developed that. But, and, and, you know, this, this explains that. Um, so this talks about static universe. Now, this, this graphic right here shows now how people understand the expanding universe. So they, they usually use a loaf of raisin bread to explain it. As the loaf expands, the distance between the raisins expand too. But again, even there, there's no reason that that expansion would be faster and faster and faster. That, that doesn't make sense. Uh, yet that's what a lot of them claim. So this says the mathematics tells you about the possible solutions, but you need to look at the physical universe to find which describes uh, which one of these describes us. That came in the 1920s thanks to the work of Edwin Hubble. Hubble was the first to discover that individual stars could be measured in other galaxies determining their distance. Nearly concurrent with this was the work of Vesto Silfer. Atoms work the same everywhere in the universe. They absorb and emit light at certain specific frequencies, which depend on uh, how their electrons are excited or de-excited. When he viewed these distant objects, which we now know to be other galaxies, their atomic signatures were shifted to longer wavelengths than could be explained. Uh, and then they, they combined these, these observations. Uh, and, and if you want, you can look at the article to get you know, all, all of this stuff. But, but the, the way that it's explained is that there are two ways to make sense of, of this phenomenon that we see. First, either all of relativity is wrong. We, we are at the center of our universe and everything was moving symmetrically away from us. It's one possibility. I don't have a reason to believe in that, but I also don't have a reason to throw that out. Um, that, that what if we are in the center? And what, what if that's what we're looking at? You know, that, that would account for some of this. Uh, but, but again, I, I, don't, I don't have any evidence or any real reason to believe that. It's interesting to think about, but... Uh, uh, or number two, relativity was right. Friedman was right. And the farther away a galaxy was from us, on average, the faster it appeared to recede from our perspective. Um, so it says here, it, we'll, we'll take it from this paragraph, the further away an object is from 
another, the more stretching occurs. Now, it's interesting that they use stretching because there are, there, there's a, a Bible verse that talks about how God stretches the heavens like a tent. Now, imagine there's one point on that tent. You, you put, you know, uh, like a piece of rubber or something, and you stretch it. Well, at all points on that rubber, the ones closer to the bottom where, where you're stretching, they're going to get further away, and it's going to appear to be faster. Now, it's going to appear to be. It wouldn't necessarily have to be faster, but it would appear that way because space itself is getting stretched. Um, one way you could think of it is if you, if you have, uh, let's say, a yo-yo, and uh, you, you have it on a you know, long string, and you're spinning it around, and you're, you're, okay, and you're slowly letting the string go. So the, the yo-yo is, is spinning, and it's slowly being let out, you know, having wider orbits until eventually it is released from your hand, and it goes and, and flings out into the distance. Well, imagine that same thing, but imagine you're rotating with the yo-yo. So as you're spinning it, you're, you're looking at the yo-yo and you're, you're, uh, rotating, you're rotating with it. Now, as you're rotating with the yo-yo, let's say that you're only looking at the yo-yo and all you see is the distance between the yo-yo and you is increasing. You're not taking into account the, the, the spinning, the orbit. Um, from your perspective, it's, it's going out, but it seems to be receding from you faster and faster until it flings out because you let it go. It's not actually going faster, but it appears as if it is because you're not taking uh, the, 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 the rotation, the orbit into account. So it seems like the further it goes out, the faster it, it, it's, it's moving. What if something like that is going on? What if, what if the only reason it seems like it's moving faster is because we're not taking into account four-dimensional space that our universe might be rotating or revolving through? Uh, and if space-time is curved, it would stand to reason it, it, must, be, it must have a, a higher dimensional space to curve into. Um, just like if two-dimensional space was all there is, you can't curve a piece of paper because what are you cur curving it into? you would have to have a third dimension to curve it into. If space and time, if space-time is curved, you need another dimension for it to curve into. So it's interesting that they use the analogy of stretching uh, because the Bible uses that, that, that analogy or that literal fact, depending how you look at that verse. Uh, they, they use that as well uh, the, in, in the Bible. So it says, if all you had was a universe filled, uh, filled uniformly and evenly with matter, that matter would simply get less dense and would, and would see everything expand away, everything else, as time went on. Uh, and then the, this, this, this has to do with uh, the cosmic uh, ra uh, background radiation. It, it's, it's, it, is, it is a factor into this, but it would take a long time to go through. Uh, but it says, uh, but the universe isn't perfectly even and uniform. It has overdense regions like planets, stars, galaxies. Um, so on and so forth, so things are different. Now, here it shows cosmic epochs. So this is present time on this side. Here, here's the telescope, present time. Now, as they look back and back and back, they see that these objects are moving faster and further away from each other. But again, this is back in time. So back then they were moving faster. That doesn't mean that they are now. And actually, there's no reason to think that they are now because when we look at objects closer to us, they're not moving as, as fast uh, away from us as the further ones. So why is it not that, that we got this whole thing flipped, uh, that you know, we, we, we made a mistake somewhere and forgot to factor time into it, and actually the expansion of the universe is decreasing? So this goes on to say, because the question of this is why, why space expands and the objects in space don't. You know, why, why the expansion of space doesn't have much to do with, like, the distance between the Earth and the moon. And what they really talk about here is uh, that other forces come into play. So if gravity, if the force of gravity is stronger than the force of the expansion of space, then gravity wins and there is no expansion between those two objects, say, you know, the Earth and the Sun, for example then there's, there's, there's no expansion because gravity is a stronger force. You have other forces that could play into it as well, radiation, things like that. So there are certain localized area where the, where areas where the expansion doesn't uh, occur like that. 
because, again, gravity wins. Now, could that be because now the expansion force, the initial thrust of the Big Bang, you know, say God snapping his fingers or God speaking uh, everything into existence and everything fly, fly, flying out, could it be that now, uh, because entropy has taken place uh, over a longer period of time, things are slowing down more than they, than they did before, and now gravity can overcome the, the, the expansion of the universe? Could it, could it be that that's all it is? You know, I don't know. Uh, so that, that's this article. There's a lot more great information here if you want to look into it. Again, it's at Forbes.com, and the title is, This is Why We Aren't Expanding Even If the Universe Is.